I'm Diana Felsone, and this is 4 for 4 Science, where we break down four science topics in only four minutes. It's the kind of lightning round Elon and Einstein would totally dig. Attention night owls who despise mornings and enjoy meat, hello. You're just the kind of colonist Mars needs, according to one study. Claire, why are these requirements key? Yeah, so if we're thinking about sending people to Mars long term, we want to make sure that they have the least amount of problems once they get there. So a study came out that said people who sleep much later than people who wake up earlier actually have a little bit longer circadian rhythm, so a little over 24 hours. And we already know that on Mars, the, out, the day is 37 minutes longer than an Earth day. So once those people get there, they'll be able to adjust a little bit better. And then at the same time, once they're eating, um, we don't want any dietary restrictions, which would cause some problems. So as long as yeah. you can eat hamburgers and sleep late, you might do really well. There you go, James. Um, the way this was described is you need an average Joe Pallet. So like you, I'm like, count me in. If I get the opportunity to lie in and eat burgers all day, then I wasn't excited about Mars, but now I am. Yeah, I'm on your, I'm on your page. Well, what's interesting about this is that it, it brings up the issue of dietary restrictions as being something that could affect your eligibility for space travel, and that shifts your focus to a part of the space program that you might not necessarily think about, and that's the food scientists yeah. who put the meals for the I imagine together. a lot of aspiring astronauts who now are on that uh, gluten-free diet or anything where they're like, I'm totally pescatarian, are now rethinking their choices because they want to go to Mars. If you've ever seen the movie Little Shop of Horrors, then you know how deadly a Venus flytrap can be, but did you know how calculating? Mindy, explain this fatal math. I feel like this should be like a lifetime kind of movie. <laughs> so what Venus flytraps do is they actually count the number of touches to these sensitive hair-like structures that grow on the insides of their traps. Wow. Two taps, that's all it takes, and they know to slam the trap shut. And then as the insect struggles, it touches these structures more, and that triggers the release of the plant's digestive juices, basically saying, dinner time. It's so weird. <laughs> this is great. I mean, you know, for like science education, like this is something the kids could really get into. I mean, mm -hmm. actually, as a kid, the first plant I owned was a Venus flytrap. That I used to feed all manner of stuff like, you know, potato chips, whatever. And but if they eat it? Yeah, they would eat it, yeah. Wow. I mean, it didn't last that long, but whatever, that's by the by. But I think that <laughs> something like this would be great for kids. I really do. It's so eerily similar to like Audrey, too, like you were yeah. saying in Little Shop of Horrors. But at the same time, it's not like these plants have brains, so they're not thinking in the cognitive sense of the word. So it'll be interesting what scientists, like how scientists figure out what's actually happening physiologically that helps them figure out after three taps, oh, they should close and eat their prey. That is crazy. It's mm -hmm. also a carnivorous plant, and Darwin was obsessed with this plant. It was one of the, the many things that he was interested in. An extremely rare white giraffe named Omo was spotted in Tanzania, but is not albino. What is her condition, James? So her condition is leucism, basically where um, some cells, or some or all cells, fail to produce pigment. Now, this is different to albinism in animals, which is like mm -hmm. the complete absence of the pigment melanin. So, basically, in albinism in animals, they have red eyes, so this giraffe has normal eyes. She's very, very cute looking. Beautiful. I've got to say. Yeah. And the park officials, they were really pleased to see her because if you're a giraffe calf, then your survival chances actually aren't that great. In fact, most giraffes born, well, not most, uh, half, half of giraffes that are born in the wild don't make it past their six month birthday. So, you know, seeing her a year after mm -hmm. she was born and first sighted was actually really right. special. Easily preyed upon. And now, once it's past a year, the next big thing, which is kind of sad, is that they think that um, it might be susceptible to poachers because of the unique coloring of their skin. So I think it's really important to really track this animal since it's so unique and so rare um, to make sure that it doesn't get poached. Yeah, and there's really no way to protect the giraffe. So that's, that's the whole thing, other than just like you said, maybe being able to track the giraffe. But at this point, it's really going to come down to fate and luck and hopefully some people having humanity versus wanting to get a souvenir. Rapper B.O.B. is in a Twitter battle with Neil deGrasse Tyson over whether the Earth is flat. Okay. Who wins, Claire? This whole thing started on Sunday night when B.O.B. posted all these tweets saying that the Earth is flat and all these conspiracy theories around it. And it's just crazy. I mean, this is one of the most scientifically proven facts. There's so many ways that we can show that the Earth is round. We can look at satellites. Um, it's actually how satellites work in general based on the fact that the Earth is round. So um, this got the attention of Neil deGrasse Tyson, who responded back, and it just created this whole feud over this very much proven scientific fact. Yeah, I mean, we've known about the curvature of the Earth for thousands of years, and now kind of we're having this, there's this bizarre debate going on. I don't know whether um, 
deGrasse Tyson really needed to engage with him on this level because he was being so ridiculous. Right. You just have to imagine, though, from, from the perspective of someone who says the Earth is flat, what does it even look like? And the, pop, the most popular theory amongst flat Earthers is that the Earth is a disk with the Arctic Circle right at the center, and Antarctica is actually a 150-foot-tall wall of ice that goes all the way around the rim that's guarded by NASA officials who are kind of like the Night's Watch, except instead of keeping <laughs> wildlings out, they're keeping I else. love that there's a conspiracy theory about this and that you know so much about it. Now you know what we <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you think using the hashtag 444science. Yeah, I'd like to meet those conspiracy theories. <laughs>